was going to say, there's a, it's a headache. I don't need any more headaches. Uh, I'm trying to get you more headaches. Thank you. Every day. It's my goal. To give us more headaches? To give you more headaches, yes. And say hi to Angel. Hey, Angel. What's up? Stop. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, this will be the first video of the week. So this will be, like, on Monday, this will be the first thing that people see, and they'll see you doing the what's up thing. So Exactly. That'll just set the tone for the rest of the week. I mean, granted, it's going to take me four and a half hours to do this, thanks to Apple just destroying Final Cut. But hey, apparently they want it to be the Final Cut. <laughs> cut! Yeah, stop using Final Cut, because we messed it all up. It's final. That's it. And this has been Photography Talk with our Thank video talk. Thank you for talk. watching, guys. Uh, don't forget to tune tomorrow. <laughs> uh, well, what we have today is a single cab Chevy truck. Yes. This is a nice truck. And this is a nice truck. Uh, the wheels, the stance is, is really nice. It's lowered. Yeah. Uh, it's red. It's very red. It's a RST. Uh -huh. uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it looks nice though. Hola, Oscar. How are you? Hey, brother. How you doing, bud? And so what we're doing is... He's already done a stereo in this. Yeah. He tried. He tried. He tried. He did a good job. Okay, he did a fair job. He did better than most. I'm not gonna lie. What's up, Johnny? So go ahead. It was, it was tough, man. You know, and I get it, you know, sometimes when you don't have the tools and everything, you're trying to do the best as you can. And that was good. Yeah. It's just a still, you know, like you got used to that. Limping to the left. Yeah. Um, so if you notice the whole interior is out of the car, I'm sorry, well, the whole, all the, because he just, he went, he went overboard and that's okay. But we're, we're, we're dialing it back and doing it the way we would do it. Um, he had the amplifier underneath here, along with the LC7i, and it was impossible to get to it without obviously pulling the seat out, or the seat, yeah, all that nonsense, so we, no, no, we're not going to do that. We're actually moving everything over to this area here. He had a subwoofer. Uh, the 4x6s weren't playing, and they weren't mounted very well, so we had to make new mounts for them. Uh, where are the, where are the corner over there in my bench. Yeah, so we have these nice infinities here, and they just had them kind of screwed into place. So what we did is we actually have the factory, factory size, this here, and what you what we did is because we've done these before. This mount here is the factory speaker for back there. So you can see it's not really a four by six, but we can take this in this square shape oh, and that will make this which is now the new mount that we made as you can see it's it's exactly the size that it needs to be to fit these and now we can screw these into place and they'll be mounted uh, properly uh, one of the things this was not playing uh, which is kind of weird so we'll make sure they play when we're done obviously so these are these are done we'll get these in shortly one of the things that I thought was cool that he did is he mounted tweeters up here in the corners of the dash on this GM. So he has some KS tweeters mounted here. So he made a kind of a three-way set. So this, this just fit in there really nice. And he had some Memphis, Memphis three uh, little guys up in there and we're taking those out and replacing those with the Kicker KS. So we've made up our crossovers. He even soldered in the little connectors. Like I said, he did our, he, he gets a, he gets an A for almost getting there. Um, so this will plug in Fernando's adding in shrink wrap to label these because we'll have the tweeter which had this on there, the mid-range had that on there. And then in the doors, he has a set of Q-Class uh, coaxial six by nines. He's powering everything off of the K KX five channel. He's got a comp RT wedge box that was behind the seat. That'll go back in. Um, and so we're, this, this is how this is going to sit up underneath the passenger seat. There's actually a lot of room underneath the passenger seat. Um, so this will go in there. 
power wire is going to come up the passenger side and attach to the battery here. That was one of the things that were like, um, didn't do right. Uh, the battery, but the fuse holder's over here. That's not 18 inches. So no big deal, no big deal. Hey, uh, at least it's mounted. Uh, we'll be taking that out. We'll move the fuse over to here and we're hoping to go through this side of the firewall, uh, which I don't see any reason why we won't be able to, and into this area over here. Right now the battery is disconnected because we have all this out. See, here's the connector for the tweeter right now. That'll go back in, or the mid-range. It's one of those. Oh, that might be the mid-range. This is the tweeter connector here. So, oh yeah, look at that. See, he actually did them backwards too. Mm -hmm. So he's thinking. He, like I said, he 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 got it almost. Uh, the other thing too, I think the thing that totally queered the deal was he kept the factory radio that came out. This is actually the Alpine restyle unit that's in here right now. Um, that's why it just kind of looks like it's just blah, uh, because it's not all installed yet, but this is the Alpine DVD player. The Alpine unit tucks up into the radio there. As you can see, there's tons of zip ties holding everything in place. This is going to get going to the dash. Haven't got to that yet. These are what power up the new Alpine screen. This is for the air conditioner. Uh, these will be the RCAs that go down to the amplifier, which will come down through here. There's your chime speaker. So backup camera retention is actually behind the glove box and over here. So that wire gets zip tied up into the dash. So everything is, is tucked in there. Just this is kind of pulled out still because we need to be able to get to the remote turn on wire that's right here. Uh, and also you have to pull the steering column apart to get to uh, the steering wheel controls and the OBD2, which I've gotten to and just ran over. So. You know, this will all get tidied up and put away. There is no mic because the mic is built into the screen. I love it. I love it, right? That is weird. Um, so this is the new, new center here and there's your little mic. But that is what it'll look like in the dash. It's got these cool little silver things that go to the side of it and kind of match up to what the factory did which was this guy here and i think i think that's about it i think that's what we have i think that's what we have so far mm, yeah yep now one cool thing about this truck is he had new new interior put in and i'm, I'm really digging this fernando's big fans you got two-tone looks really nice Center console's done up the same way. It looks really nice. Digging this truck, digging this truck. I've never done that restyle, just a lot of these. I don't even know if they make this one anymore, to be honest with you, Johnny. I think they stopped. I think the only thing they make anymore is just Jeeps. You might still be able to get this one, just because like anything Alpine, if they have it left over, they'll just keep selling it. But we've actually, it's a love-hate thing with this. Some people love it, some people don't. I don't know. We've We've taken one out and put just a regular radio in. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what's up. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I don't know. I like it because I don't have to cut anything. It just snaps into place. So from that regard, Alpine, yay. Uh, but the High 10 does the same thing. It just slides into place. But Radio Wars. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, Dean, I took third place. Uh, third place last night on Kicker Unmasked. Oh, wow. Bobby got third place. He got some headphones and a koozie and a t-shirt. Nice. Good job, Bobby. Look at you. Good job. I didn't stick around. I had to move on and get work done. Uh, if you're re wondering why there was no video today, simple enough answer is I spent all night working on the Rockford video. Um, I'll be spending all night working on the Rockford video tonight, probably the night after that and the night after that. This is... It's a huge video, guys. It's it's ginormous. Um, I don't I don't. When we were filming it, we kind of were like, dude, this thing's gonna be big, as far as the size and the information, because they are they, dude, they literally tell us everything. I was almost like, I don't know how we're gonna be able to publish this because yeah. it it literally spells out all the secret sauce. Yeah. So it'll be crazy that if they, I mean. Which is weird because it was them. I don't see why they'll, they'll tell us no, but I mean, they told us everything. It was nuts. 
Um, right now, I'm at about 50 minutes. So, oh, sh- dude. And I'm not even having, I'm still dealing with speakers. We haven't even got to amplifiers yet. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. In a good way. Not not saying bad. It's just. No, it's, it's just a it's just a ton, a ton of, information. of information. I was, and I, you know, and I keep the part of me that wants to get something out there wants to break it into two, because just to make it smaller, bite-sized pieces. But then the other side of me that's like, no, it just needs to be one long video. Is so you can see it, you can watch it. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Part one, part two. Yeah, and that's the thing. I didn't, I didn't want to break it into parts because I thought you guys would just like to see it all in one sitting. Uh, so get some popcorn and put it on the big screen. Oh, yeah, definitely, dude. definitely. Totally. Um, any idea why my audio control AC BT24 Bluetooth streamer not connecting to my iPad? Yes, it's actually a simple solution that I do not have the answer for. Call tech support and they'll be able to walk you through it pretty quick. There's something simple that it, I never ran into, but people ask that and they're like, yeah, it's this. So there is a simple solution for it. I just, off the top of my head, don't remember what it was, but give them a call and they'll walk you through it real quick. But yeah, it's, it's, it's trust me, call them, stop screwing with it. it it's way easier. It's something really simple um, if memory serves, which sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. But anyways, back to that. It's just, yeah, it's gonna be a huge video. Oh yes, I mean we knew. That that we knew, a lot yeah, and that was the thing when we were shooting it. We almost wanted to break it into like just the guys in the install bay because I mean that's like twenty minutes. Yeah. Just oh, yeah. dealing with the install bay and tech support, but I, you know, mm, I I really just wanted to make it one video. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we'll get it done here. Because I'm tired. <laughs> and of course, as we started the show talking about Final Cut sucking yeah, because uh, of the new update, that didn't help last night because it crashed like twice. And I'm like, really? Uh, uh. And then when it goes to reload, it takes it takes like 10 minutes now to reload. It's the worst. Like, Apple should be smacked on the head. Whoever's in charge of that division should just be killed. Like, okay, not just maybe hurt really bad. <laughs> Fired. How's that? You know, fix it and then we'll we'll forgive you. But until then, you suck. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. <sighs> breathe. No, don't breathe. Just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah, man. So that's it. That's what we got going on. Um, it is Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday. What is today? Wednesday. Uh, today is Wednesday. Holy crap. I thought it was Thursday. Oh, Bobby. Happy 15th year anniversary to you and Jennifer. Congratulations. Ooh, happy anniversary. Congratulations. Uh, it is Wednesday. Uh, sorry we haven't been on for the first part of the week. You know, we were just... I don't remember what we did so far this week. Um, what's next on the books? This. We're going to be working on this till tomorrow sometime. Yeah. Because uh, we spent most of the day taking it apart. So yeah, nah, we'll, we'll get this out of here sometime tomorrow. We're not like you guys, man. We're slow. We're slow. I'm slow. We're slow workers. Uh, what do you guys think about Focal Utopias? Beautiful speakers. There you go. Beautiful speakers. I mean, you know, they are. They are definitely beautiful speakers. Um, that's one of the speakers I think you should hear. If you get the opportunity, hear it, see it. If you like it, do it. Yeah. Uh, Disney on Saturday. Nice. Very nice. Recommended SQL speaker and sub powered by a D6200 LC 1.8. So you want a loud speaker that sounds good and you got plenty of power. I'd look at the two speakers that we use on those amplifiers for, I guess, what you would say is going to be the Focal Flax or uh, one of the Morels. Uh, Morel Virtus or the Hybrid are our kind of go-to there. Um, either one of those is going to work for you. The main difference between the two is the characteristics of the tweeter. They are both loud. They're both loud. One is a metal tweeter and the other one is a cloth tweeter. So there's a little bit difference in characteristics between them. They both sound amazing and they're both loud. Through a front stage. Yeah, still both. Both of them will, will do it for you. 
I'm running a 2000 watt amp and sub. What do you recommend me upgrade? If we're just talking about what else should you add to the car, uh, it's a 2000 watt amp. Don't know what kind. If it's like a Korean style 2000 watt amp, a battery wouldn't be a bad idea, depending on you know the car that you have it in. Obviously, not knowing all the details about the system, a battery wouldn't be a bad idea. If you're looking for something fun to make it sound different, I would look into some form of harmonic restoration, like an epicenter or something like that. That could also be you know pretty exciting as of power i'm sorry oh no i would look into a battery definitely something small that you could fit in the back don't need to go crazy uh just to move the power along battery definitely capacitor kind of silly battery i mean you could look at those like the hybrid style like 12 and 15 ferret capacitors some of those are really nice um but i would still do a battery battery's way cooler I got a Pioneer 7600 NEX, and the Siri sounds horrible. What should I do? It's not my phone because it's fine on my other vehicle. Siri? When you say it sounds horrible, I would have to question, does it's just Siri that sounds horrible? Because it's 7600. Is it in network mode by chance? Did you, is it, how, you know... Do you have balance and fader front and rear? Do you have all four? Can you go into there and see if you have left, right, front, rear? Or do you just have left and right? If you just have left and right, it's in network mode, and that would understand why it sounds terrible because it's going through the mid-range crossover, and that would suck. Uh, the other thing, too, is what is connected onto the front output of the radio because the front output of the radio is where Siri comes over. It doesn't come off a of rear, it just comes off front. So what speakers are connected to that output, be it RCA or power? You gotta check that, see what that's doing. That's where the sound and your problem could lie. That's all I can think of. Uh, everything else is good, not network mode. Okay. There again, it doesn't make any sense that it would be just that. Um. So all the radio is up to date and everything? Yeah, I was going to say, if the radio is up to date... Yeah. Know, they, just mm. push, they just push the big update from Apple. Yeah, but I'm assuming it's probably sounding like crap for a while. That's strange. Okay. I would try... Okay, granted it sounds fine in another car. Have you tried another phone in your car? Like, does all Siri sound like crap? I guess would be the next thing to try. Uh, what is a good budget for an SPL sub? Hmm. Well, naturally, when it comes to anything you want to buy, you want to spend the most amount of money that you can to accomplish the task in which you're trying to achieve. If you're trying to do SPL, you're definitely going to want something that has the capability to take some abuse. Uh, you also need to look at how much power you're planning on putting in there. You want it to match up. Um, there's, there's a lot of things to consider. To just say, go out and buy the biggest, baddest woofer you can afford might not necessarily be the best move. Uh, you know, you could be better served by getting something that is, let's say, a more efficient, affordable woofer and a small amplifier that'll get you loud and not have your car hate you. Um, of course, you could also buy a triple stack or quad stack 78 pound driver and have to put you know three four thousand watts to it and you know it just depends what you're trying to do uh you know i'm a big fan of yeah these woofers look sexy as hell and i like to look at them and i think they're neat but i also don't want to put two thousand watts in my car to try to power them when i know i can just put a reasonable amount of power in there with a more efficient subwoofer and get just as much bass uh so it just it just really depends what you're trying to do. Um, one of the most common loud woofer combinations that we do, if someone's like, I don't want to take up a lot of space, I want a lot of bass, is we'll literally just put the uh, uh, kicker Q class factory box, like they make a 12 inch in a factory, off of a, I know this is weird, Rockford T750.1, which is their 900 watt little tiny amplifier because we can hide it. And it sounds fabulous. I mean, it's a, just an amazing amount of bass. But 
there again. I, I mean, it's not cracking windshields, so if you want to crack windshields, it's different. Uh, love the upgrade speakers in the Park Avenue Ultra. I'll be back eventually to have some subs, probably beginning of the year. Man, I'm glad that worked out for you. That was yesterday. Uh, okay. I'm thinking Pioneer. of Buick Park Avenue, the speakers we put in. Yeah, that was good. That was a rescue for sure. That was some scary yeah. stuff. But no, I'm glad. Glad we got to talk and figure that one out. Do you guys like the Helix amps? Love them. Wonderful amplifiers. Dig that product. Uh, we. At some point, you'll see. Um, we did a tour of their training facility when we were at Rockford. We because uh, same same state, same area. So we got to spend a couple hours with them. Went over toward the facility. And also shot a video of their test car that uses the match system. Mm-hmm. Um, so at, once we get done with Rockford, the big you know motion picture you know Avengers four uh, that we got coming out, um, then we'll go back and we'll, we'll we'll do that. We still have the SEMA video we need to come out with, but Rockford is taking the priority. And I still have the IRTA website I need to get done. So it's it's a, it's a fun best time of the year. Uh, Scar deal the best. William says that. Uh, what's the turnaround time on an install 2021 F250 door speakers and a sub? Depending on what we're doing, could be a day, could be two days. It just depends. Like if we're doing like sound treatment and all that stuff, probably two days. Meow. Are you familiar with the 05 Jeep Liberty? It has the typical din and a half face. Do they... Make a double din kit for it that it will fit. Yes, head over to metraonline.com. That is metraonline.com. They do make a double din kit for it. You do have to cut the dash in order for it to fit. But other than that, straightforward, good times. Thank you. You're welcome. Good times. If anyone has, check it out. Metra Online. There you go. Upgrade speakers, but I know it's fiber option wires that I can do. Okay. 2012 audio Q7 want to upgrade speakers, but I know it's fiber option. What can I do? Uh, I was going to say, if it's a fiber optic, uh, you have MoBridge. Um, you have Mo- MoBridge is uh, Helix, the company we just talked about, makes some options for that. Um, and then there's Nav TV. So, Helix. Mobridge, yeah. and it's spelled just like it sounds, Mobridge, and Nav TV. Uh, those are all going to make interfaces for that fiber optic. One of them should suit what you need it to do. Can I power? Can I power series in a 20 RAM? I don't know. I power, can I put power series in a 20 RAM? Oh, Jesus. How did I miss that? Uh, oh. Yeah, you can do it. Power no. Uh, series. Yeah, yeah, not the six by nine. Oh, speakers. Yeah. Oh, I talk about amplifier. I'm assuming they mean speakers. Okay. Um, go back to Monday. Yeah. And we have a RAM that we just did, and we took a lot of video on it on Instagram. Just kind of buzzed through that, and you can kind of get. We've also done a 911 on a Dodge Ram, also similar yeah. year. Uh, that you can take a look at. You don't have a lot of depth in the door, so a six and a half is really if you're trying to do like a premium six and a half, like the power six and a half will fit, but the power six by nine will not. Uh, it'll hit the door. Been waiting all week for a live. LOL, how are you guys doing? Rested up? Nope. Tired. Very tired. Actually, so Monday night, I went to bed early. Monday night? Yeah. Or was it Tuesday night? No, that was just same. Oh, so it was Monday. Monday night I went to bed early. I was tired, man. I walked in and I about passed out. Uh, I fell asleep at 10.30 and got up at like 2, posted the show for 5 thir- 5.30 and then went back to bed. It was great. Last night, that didn't happen. Worked on Rockford Video until 2, 2.30. It was 2.30. Um, be doing the same tonight and tomorrow night because I got to get that done so they can watch it. Um, and then you guys can watch it. Uh, Fernando, on the other hand, has been sleeping like a baby. Goes to bed at 9 o'clock every night. Oh, dude, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, yep. I'm in bed, snoring. Did you guys ever make a follow-up video about the JBL DSPM? Unfortunately, no, and then they came in and got it back. They needed to sell it. 
So somebody needed one right away, and we're like, by all means, it's yours, take it. And so uh, because of COVID and the lack of products, uh, it went back to them in order for a dealer to get it, which is fine with me. Uh, next time, bro, is all I can say. Maybe next year we'll take a look. We'll go back and deal with it. Is it difficult to replace the head unit of 2017 Accord? Difficult is a relative term. Uh, yes would probably be the answer you're looking for. Johnny, RCA to tweeter only. No, I got a three-way up front. There you go. Y'all can have that conversation. Uh, you think kicker, six and a half powered by audio control will sound better. The Harman system in my 2021 Ram. No. It'll sound different. Different. I don't know if it is going to sound better. The Harman system in the Ram. Is it the three-way set, the Harman in the Ram? Uh, if it is, make sure you watch Monday's video. Okay, because we that's what we did. We had a RAM with the Harman system, and we kind of take you through the whole thing. So by all means, please go watch Monday's video, and that will – you just have to watch from day to day. And that we kind of go over the whole thing and what we did into it. Splash. Splash. That's people outside smoking dope and having fun. Uh, with an AC 4.300, rear will be stock off Kenwood Exelon. Totally understandable. Here's what you want to do. If you're going to run the four channel amp to the front, which is exactly what we're going to do in this. So we have the five channel amp channels. One and two are going to go to the two and a half and tweeter in the dash channels. Three and four are going to go to the six by nines in the rear door or in the front doors. And then the radio is going to power the rears. Now, how we're going to make this happen, because we still want to be able to turn the volume on the radio all the way up, is that we're going to lower the volume going to these okay so that the amplifier in there doesn't distort this at the same point so like if we leave the volume going to our rear speakers at regular volume output what will happen is at 28 we'll say these will clip out but our rcas won't well we want to make sure we get the full power curve that full four or five volts into our rca section so we can get all the luscious sound out of it so we're going to turn the volume, which you can do in your Kenwood. You can go into the, there's a setting for speaker volume control. We're going to turn the level to these down as far as it'll go, which is like 10 dB, hopefully. And what that'll do is that'll allow us to then turn the radio all the way up. And once that will align the output power, think of it as a gain on the factory amplifier, that'll align that output deck power with the RCA power so that they both clip out at the same time. Um, and everyone will be happy, and these won't be distorting and sounding like total poo-poo. How cool is that, right? Yeah. Um, plus the rear speaker, so who cares? Uh, Dean, so what's Chris Bennett's next adventure? Uh, Chris went to work for First Tech. His first day was Monday. I wished him well, told him to put on clean underwear. He told me he might have a problem with that. Um, but no, so he's, he's going to be doing something for First Tech. He... Uh, is not really talking about it much because he doesn't know, he says, which is cool. Um, so we're going to let him be, let him do his thing, let him get comfortable, let him find his new footing in the door there. He wanted to change. He was ready to take on a new headache, a new task. So we wish him all the best of luck. And, of course, we'll be talking to him constantly. We, we always do. We're close friends. So, um, you know, if there's anything to report, and he says it's okay, then we'll definitely let you guys know. Thanks, Mobrig, big dog. I prefer power two. Want to be safe since they will be getting 120 watts. So for the amp. Perfect. Uh, I watched it just trying to find out what speakers to put in LOL. Oh, okay, cool. Um, there again, uh, the, the only problem with Kicker is that they don't make a three-way set. So you, you would have to get what... What you could do is you could buy the 6x9, 6x9 tweeter set. It's where you get the 6x9 and the tweeter and then buy the 2-inch set like we're putting in this. And if you're going to go full active, which it sounds like you are, then you'll be fine. Um, 
and that would work because those are those are matched to play that way. At some point, kicker will, will have a three-way set. We could just assume that. I mean, it's it's they haven't told us or anything, but we can just assume they'll have a three-way set at some point. It's just a matter of right now. Obviously, they can't fill orders for what they have because of what's going on in the world. So there's no reason to bring out new headaches without without having the stuff. Um, awesome. Thanks, Dean. Mobile dog. I will be doing deadening front and rear once trunk gets back from paint shop. Ooh. What's up from 50 Degrees York? Did you watch? Dude, I, I swear to God. I don't know what makes me cringe more. Um, I think, okay. Let me just, I know what makes me cringe is when I watch videos of driving in the snow mm-hmm. where you just see the random car out of nowhere just come in and it's like, Apparently, this is the only guy that doesn't realize that, like, it's snowing out. And so you just see, like, the one I just watched yesterday and today probably a hundred times was this white pickup truck just comes sliding up the street. It crashes into a red truck just like this one. And then it just keeps going. And you're like, why didn't it stop? Oh, because it can't. So it smashes into this truck, destroys this truck, and just keeps going and hits three other cars. Oh, nice. And you're just sitting there going... Is this your first time in the snow? Like, what the frick? I mean, don't get me wrong. Totally understand. It's the same way here because, like, when it rains here every day, you still get these idiots that want to drive like a bat out of hell, and it's like, it's called black ice. Uh, keep in mind, if they get the car wet, they might shrink, so they don't want to do that. So. I mean, they're going to shrink it when they run into the wall <laughs> because it's two feet shorter and the motor's sitting on their ankles. I mean, I don't know. I just, oh, that, no, every time I see a video like that, I just sit there and go, oh, God, this is why I don't live up in the snow. Yeah, that's crazy. Other than the cold part, you know. Uh, do you think it's necessary to dampen fiberglass Corvette doors? God, yes. Oh, my God, are you kidding me? Yes. The factory system in the Corvette vibrates the crap out of that door. Like, when you play that 10-inch sub, that door just goes, you can literally see the door moving when the, from the factory. Let alone you want to put something aftermarket in it that has a decent amount of power? Mm, no. Cross it over really high. And then you won't have that problem. <sighs> All right, guys. That's it for now. It is Wednesday. Thank you much for watching. This has been 5 Minutes 5 Star. Stay tuned until tomorrow. We'll take a look, hopefully, at this truck all finished and ready to get going and whatever else we got going on. That's you right. guys have a great rest of your day. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye. What are you, Antonio Banderas? <laughs> you want a guitar case? That's right. Yappa, 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 woohoo, woohoo! Speedy Gonzalez didn't carry weapons, man. That was Yosemite Sam. He was the rootin', tootin', shootin', big kabootin'. Yeah, he can't even do that anymore. I don't think. I don't even think Yosemite Sam can exist. Are you, dude? You're already sweating. Yeah. You literally had like three. Look at him glistening. Look, 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 it's look. It's hot in here, dude. No, it's not. Dude, this is not even on. Because it's not hot in here. I just cleaned the whole install bay. Look. It it's does look hot. Okay. No garbage in here. Oh, there's no garbage in there. Well, you're the only one that works here, according to everyone, so it's all good. And that's what I'm sweating. Oh, okay. I mean, I was just... Actually, it's funny. I was freezing my butt off. Because the car, well, I was showing the guy the car, and um, no sinus problems, Fernando. And you'd be wrong on that one. That is correct. No, it's you're wrong. Your sinuses you suck. He sneezes like a freight train. And you're like, hey, man, do you want a Zyrtec? 27 sneezes later. Yeah, I'll take one. Yeah. The much. heat's in the tools. What's up? What's up, fro? What's, What's up, Dean and Fernando? Um, yeah, I was going to say something. I lost it. I don't even remember what, oh, yeah. Yep. You're outside showing the... Oh, yeah, yeah. I was showing out, showing the, the truck. The truck we finished, and he came and picked it up. I know we didn't show the finished product, but I think everyone got the gist of it yesterday. I, I put the story in my Instagram, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people saw it. I listen to you guys talk about car stereos more than I listen to my car stereo. I mean, that's kind of fun. I'm just going to say thank you. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> Hi, guys. No cars in the bay. That's good. 
Um, you finished them. Yeah, they're done. It's because yeah. it, for us, it's six, five, five, five. I wish it was six. So some days we finish early, which is fine because that gives us time to clean up. And I was working on some lower thirds or upper thirds, as we call them now. Oh, I forgot. I want to show you mine. Okay. Um, oh, you know what's coming up? What's up from New Orleans? Oscar's in the house. Hey. Another day in paradise, 46 degrees. Uh, no thanks, Jason. What's up, guys? Long day. Yeah, it had, yeah, long day, long night. What's up from SoCal? Uh, what is his Instagram? What's your Instagram? Uh, Mr. Mr. Lopez. No underscore? Uh, underscore, okay. Mr. So Mr. Underscore Lopez. Yeah. I was going to say, you want to just go to it on your phone? Of course. Hola, Oscar. Hey, Oscar. Good afternoon, guys. Right Good there. afternoon. Oh, hold on. So there you go. You forgot the 13. I can't forget. I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. I think you can also just search for Fernando Lopez. but Yeah, Fernando Lopez, but it's just like right there. Yeah. Um, so we learned something... Oh, right there, look. Oh, you took a video. Oh, look at you stealing one of my moves. No, 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 it's just a story. Tomorrow's gonna go away. That's oh, so make sure you, s yeah. Oh, well, that was not good. I, I know, it's just a story. But. Yo. Ooh, exactly, and it's gone. Um, yes. Yeah, the other day, how are those kicker boxes? They're wonderful, we sell a ton of them. Yeah. Um, will you guys be making a trip from Louis? Okay, I will be making a trip from Louisiana in the first part of 2020 for you guys to do. Awesome, Bring Popeyes. <laughs> we have Popeyes here. <laughs> Just kidding. And it sucks. Um, so on December. December. Yeah, it's next month. December first, which is yeah. going to be Wednesday, December first. We're going to have Brian Schmidt on. The show from it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a you know us here him there he's not That's actually Wednesday, coming here correct? That's a Wednesday mm -hmm. December first at uh, six thirty Yep we're gonna do some arts and crafts Okay and we're gonna talk about the expo which we will be attending and we have some more news about the expo coming up that we can't talk about yet either That will be on the first. We'll talk about our stuff before then, but the 1st of December, we'll have Brian on, and we'll okay. be doing some arts and crafts, and like also it. talking about... The arts and craft part's going to be fun. He's yeah. got... uh we, bring we, the play from Sebastian? Yes. <clears throat> bring the play Yeah. Um, but no, we came up with a really cool idea, you know, that he, that he does more towards, you know, us. So okay. anyways, you guys really? just have to wait and see. Very cool, Mobile Solutions, yep, yep. yep. So right we'll, we'll go, we, yep. have, we have some templates too. 62 in Massachusetts having a heat wave, no doubt, right? Dude, in Canada, it's crazy. Yeah, poor, poor Canadian Marty had snow today. I will build the snowman. Okay, Olaf. Oh, speaking of, dude, you, you have Disney Plus, right? Yeah. You have to watch Olaf does, Olaf does Disney? Or tells Disney. Okay. So they, they, they did a bunch of Olaf's and he tells the stories of Disney cartoons. Oh. It's okay. hilarious. <laughs> it's like 15 minutes long, the whole thing. They do like five of them. It's it's hilarious. Have you guys had any issues with A audio control? Mon right, hold on. AC mono screws messing up, not tightening all the way down before. No. Um, ACM? I'm thinking, no, just audio control screws okay. not tightening down all the way. No. Definitely... Now, also, you don't you don't have to go crazy with the tighter up. Sometimes, like you know, like <laughs> definitely don't use a drill. No, just like <clears throat> so when I pin tie. when I this is the screwdriver I use, yeah. and when I'm screwing it down, I'm actually put my hand on the top of it like this. Yeah, and I you know once I feel it start to get pressure, I push. I'm physically pushing it down and turning yeah um but yeah i'm not a fan of the of the of the screws the i like the allens and the new the new ones, the new ones are starting to ship with allens yeah 
Yes, yeah, with the ferrule, and that's with the ferrules in place. So yeah, you gotta just you gotta push, push and turn, push that's and turn. Right. Back to the grind. Have a great day. You too, fro. Uh, just watched American Gangster last night for the hundredth time. Get a hobby. That was uh, Oscar. I don't know. I I can't watch a movie more than. I have a hard time watching a movie more than once. Whatever. No, I do. I I just I I don't have time. Every time like Troy comes in, I watch it. Well, yeah, well, okay, so if I'm flipping through the channels and it's a movie I like, I'll leave it on, but I'm usually not paying attention to it. And then I always laugh because I go, why am I sitting here watching these commercials? I That's literally serious. own the copy of this. I could watch it from the beginning. Yeah. No drill. Blowed in, blowed out. I love that one. Okay, Eight, uh, 1. 1.8 speaker output. Yeah. Um, 1.8? The 1.800? Yeah, you just got to just... I mean, like we. I mean, we put a lot of them in. I've never had a problem with the speaker. No. no. I think I've watched Forrest Gump at least five times. You need to talk to Fernando about Forrest Gump, Oscar. Dude, I haven't watched. It. It's in the list. No, now it's not. My list is long. So you'll I never watch it, ever. Uh, Dean, tell them your take on distortion. You got to be more specific, Christian. Uh, you gotta remember, man, when you're here and I talk, doesn't mean I always listen. Uh, I could watch <laughs> Forrest Gump a hundred times. Cause life that? is, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Um, and all the Star Wars movies as well. I can't watch the Star Wars movies. I've seen them enough times in my youth to where I just, like I said, I, dude. I never watched the first, the second, third. I just watched, they just... I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I, I own a ton of movies. Like, I own a ton of movies that I've literally watched once. And now, okay, so what I used to do is I'd watch in the movie theater, and then when it come out, I'd watch it again. Right. Now I don't do that because I never go to the movie theater. <laughs> so exactly. it's like this weekend I watched Shang-Chi and the Ten whatever rings of toilet paper. Um, Haley just laughed. And was like, dude, this was a movie. This sucked. Um, I watched the what? What was the Rock? Gal Gazette, and, Deadpool, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds. What was that Red Notice or Red Red, Red Notice? Red yeah. Notice. Red I Notice. watched that, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then yeah. I watched the movie for tonight. That is, uh, which is the heart. The harder they fall. The harder. The harder they fall. Which uh, we'll talk about tonight on side the harder side it is to get out. Yeah. Uh, The harder it is to finish watching, <laughs> um, you know. But that's what I'll do. I'll do like a block of movies hey, and all the Star Wars movies. Yeah, that was Oscar. Uh, yeah, I, dude, I, I, you I'll, should go. You should stop watching movies. Go back to work. Yeah, that's just it. It's <laughs> like you know. And then I get up. You know, it's like I, I wonder why I'm always tired. But like Sunday, it's like Saturday night to Sunday. I have. To, that's like my only time to watch like TV. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just try to watch everything. And then it's like, I don't get to watch TV for the rest of the week. No, I can wait for Sing. Um, are the Friday movies on your collection, Dean? I've seen all of them. I don't own any of them because it's one of those movies where I knew I'd watch it once and I'd never watch it don't again. Don't hit me, don't hit me. And I would laugh and, and I enjoyed them. I enjoyed every one. But there again, some movies I'm... I have a really... I have a, okay, my memory is, as you guys know, kind of weird. Um, I guess it would be the easiest way to say it, but movies, I can remember, like, I don't know, I, I can't remember important shit, but movies right, so what's and your, what's your crap, favorite movie? I don't have, I mean, there isn't. No, 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 you have to have one. Uh, we, we've, we've covered this. I got to sit down and think about it. Um, well, don't sit down, just think about it. So, one of, one of my favorite movies, okay. I won't say the favorite movie because I don't think there's any favorite movie. One of my favorite movies was the original Ghostbusters. Okay. I, I've probably seen that. I've seen it enough times where I can quote pretty much the whole movie. All right. Uh, Predator, the original Arnold Schwarzenegger. All right. There again, there's only 10 lines in the whole movie. I could quote them all. Mm -hmm. um, but those are two movies that I've watched countless times. Mm -hmm. Um, Predator, I have the VHS copy, the Laserdisc copy, the Blu-ray, and the DVD copy of it. And, of course, I think I actually bought it on iTunes because I was like, screw it, Why I'll not? have all I of have them. It, yeah. um, 
Uh, Eleanor scene from Gone. Oh, dude, 60 seconds awesome. is the greatest I car audio movie. All right, so side jag seconds. right here. Years ago, we had a guy that played. We had a guy that played for the Buccaneers, and he wanted an Eleanor car. It was right when the Buccaneers won the Super Bowl for the first time. We did a lot of work for a car concierge, which is a guy that that gets you and takes care of your cars and all this other crap. So he brings us this Eleanor replica, and there's a video of it somewhere. Um, I don't remember where it's at. I mean, okay. it's, anyways. I think we talked about it in Dean's Classic Cars. But the funny thing was we put, like, this was back in the old school Rockford time, like, with those, with these amplifiers here. Uh -huh. So it had those, those amplifiers there. And we did the original P3 subwoofers, box, two batteries, Sorry. bunch of those amplifiers. Redid a whole bunch of crap in the car because somebody else had tried to do, like, kick panels and stuff. Yeah. Changed the whole thing. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. The problem was, and the paint was fabulous. Yeah. This was a 100% example of gold plating a turd. They never changed anything else in the car. So the suspension system was the original suspension system. Oh, wow. When we put the speaker box, the batteries, and all the crap in the trunk. The wheels it, fall off? It, it, no, it <laughs> sat on the wheels. So anyways, whatever. They drag it up onto the car hauler to take it down to the hotel wow. because the Buccaneers always stayed in a hotel game night because they, you know, for, yeah, you yeah. know, so they wouldn't go have sex with their wives and all that other crap. Anyways, drops it off in front of the hotel underneath the little cover because they're like, no, bring me the car. I want the car. Dude, guy drives the car around the parking lot, just smoking the tires because he didn't care. Didn't care. He just wanted to drive it and listen to Sarah and jam out. Put it back on the car, car hauler, and it went back to the mechanic to fix all the suspension. Put that was the end. No, that but car. dude, it had brand. These were brand new wheels and tires. This guy did not care. It was fucking it was Why hilarious. Would they care? I know they got money. They got money yeah, for days. Of course. Uh, Scarface, one of my favorite, other favorites. Now it's funny. You uh, like Scarface? I, dude, I have it on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. I have it on Laserdisc. Okay. I've watched it maybe twice. Okay. And I don't think I've ever watched my copy of it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. No, I watched I watch it. Um, but but there again, it's one of those movies like, I could pretty much tell you every scene in the movie. Um, Frank. Yeah. Frank Derby, Police Squad. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Smoking the Bandit. Oh, yeah. Smoking the Bandit? Yeah, Burt Reynolds, the, the car. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This has gone sideways. So, oh. So what's going to happen is, is Monday, what's up, Paul? Um, what's going to happen is Monday when people go to watch this. Elf, all... Elf, I like Elf. Oh, yeah. Well, they have a new one. HBO came out with a new, the, from the creators of Elf. I don't know. Well, Police Academy. Yeah, those are funny. It's those are funny. so stupid. I bet they funny. They're so stupid. They were funny <laughs> in the 80s. Um... So somebody's gonna watch this on Monday and be like, "Where are they? Why aren't they talking about car stereo?" Lore of the Rings. Why don't people talk oh, about this much movie stuff when we do side jag at nighttime where we're supposed to talk about movies? That, I, that's my question. Love Lord of the Rings. So, Lord of the Rings made a director's cut, and they added about thirty to forty minutes to each episode of each one of the three things. So they added like an extra hour and a half. So I, of course, bought those yeah. box sets. They did the same thing when they came out with um, The Hobbit. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. luckily I didn't have to buy those because at that point I think they were already on Netflix or something like that, I, I think. I may have bought them, I don't know. I watched those movies on one of the trips to Kicker, oh. I believe. Um, Wolf. <clears throat> Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, I liked that one. I did. I thought it was Really? Good. Yeah, I thought it that was That was good, that was good. How do you help customers pick speakers besides the size constraints? I got it. You know what? That, that one ship just hit me, dude. Well, first time you, you 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 grab one speaker and you grab another one, you're like, all right, pick one. No, not really. Uh. <laughs> so really what it comes down to is, because like a display board sucks. At the end of the day, display board sucks. In a car, you can only have one set of speakers in. And that's it. So, ooh. What you have to do is you have to kind of explain to the person you're buying the speaker from mm -hmm. what it is about the music you like. Now, they may have a display board that has different speakers on there. So, like, if they have... What I always tell people to do is listen to the tweeters. 
find out, see if they have a metal tweeter and if they have a cloth tweeter. Don't pay attention to the volume because on a board, the metal is always gonna be louder. But just pay attention to the characteristics of the two tweeters. Uh -huh. Figure out which one you like, a hard dome or a soft dome. And then from there, you can kind of move in the direction of the mid bass that you want to accompany it. Um, but it's really, a lot of it to me is the tweeter and how your ear reacts to it. Now, every speaker has a personal. Every, every speaker has their own salt and pepper yes. on them. There is no two, two, uh, there is no two steaks alike. Right, so for us is is. is well, I mean, I'm gonna say for you it's like easier because you listen to a lot of speakers. Best uh, concert and DVD to watch in car. Dave Matthews. Really? Yeah, Dave Matthews was awesome. Um, okay. Yeah, I like that. I'm not a concert guy, but I you really You know what I really dig into it? Um, tiny. Tiny Disc. Oh, Tiny Disc. Concerts. Uh, the NPR Tiny, NPR, NPR Tiny, Tiny Desk, Desk Concerts on, on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, dude, if you have the opportunity, just watch it. They're uh, great to listen to in your car. Yes. Some days suck, but... Some days do suck. Um, and, and credit for this, 100% goes to Matt Schaefer. Matt Schaefer, um, yes, At the Old Fashioned like... Car Stereo Podcast. Yes. How uh, is it? Do you enjoy it? I haven't listened to myself yet, but if you guys are interested in a 12 volt podcast, that would be the ones. Uh, Gary Bell, Matt Schaefer, they do a wonderful job. 20 episodes. Right now, I am listening to Andy Waymar's mm -hmm. podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to this guy, you know, new so in the industry. Obnoxious prick. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just nice. It's, it's annoying, but I gotta listen to it. Oh, it's annoying. Yeah, because he gives you a shout out or two. <laughs> uh, come to Miami, they will sell you DS18 if you make that question. <laughs> we will sell you DS18 if you actually we'll ask for it. We'll sell it to if you want it. <laughs> if you ask for it. Oh, it's called N NPR. Yeah. NPR, like National Public Radio. NPR. Uh, tiny. Tiny, tiny desk, desk concerts. Concert. Tiny desk concerts concerts it's on youtube mm -hmm. there are tons of them the ones pre-covid are typically better because they're done in their studio they're recorded exceptionally well the ones post-covid yeah. a lot of them were done from or individuals COVID. houses yeah and they uh, they're okay yeah. some of them suck but the quality of music is in really the production good. value of the, the of theirs is really really good. It's impressive because we normally say YouTube music sucks, but they did. Well, it's NPR, man. They got incredible that incredible job. They got the money, apparently. Uh, yeah, but like, still, well, yeah, but they're again, but from you got to you got to remember. Know? Yeah, but no, it's remember, it's not YouTube that makes the music suck. It's the guys that are uploading crappy music to YouTube that makes it suck. There's. There's plenty of good music to be had on YouTube. It's just, how did you upload it? Mm -hmm. You know, is it a copy of a copy? You know, is it some live live wire or Napster crap that you know you recorded at some crummy bit rate that, okay. you know, you you basically took your phone, you recorded a music video off of the TV, and then you uploaded it to YouTube. What about live streaming? Yeah. Anyways, um. I love hearing all the car audio podcasts. Yeah, they nice. I miss doing ours. Not enough to oh, want to really. do it again, but I, I I mean, I really do would like to redo ours. I just, I don't I don't think we would have enough. The problem we ran into is topics. Yeah. Like we were running out of topics. I mean, I it, it just got to the point where you just, what else are you going to talk about? Let's talk about movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not working out either. Is um, there any way possible to fit an iPhone? X series 6.9 components in the rear doors of a 2021 F-150 Supercraft. No. 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 Why would you just, what, what is going, who the? I don't know. What is, what is going on? I don't know, man. Your phone is just going crazy over there. Um, no, there's not. It's, it's, there's physically not enough room. The six and a half will be fine. Um, you're not. It's not a Dodge Ram. If you want a Dodge, if you want six by nine's rear door, by all means, pick up a Dodge Ram. And you have six by nine's rear door. Yeah. Uh, Fernando, tiny Dilo in Espanol. <laughs> okay, give him a second. N P R N P R tiny. Like how you spell it. Yeah. Como tú lo tienes ahorita, así tiny desk. 
like desk. Like a like a school desk. A school desk. So it's like D E S K desk. Yeah. You will find it in YouTube like so quick. I mean, if you type in N P R. N P R. As soon as you type N P R tiny, it'll show up. It will show it up like right away. I, I feel like they should be paying us for this at this point. And this show is brought, brought to you by, by National no. Public Radio. Make sure you. I'm gonna send it now. Send in your money to sponsor them. They're, those guys are always at. That's the one thing I hate about NPR is they're always asking for money. Uh, I mean, I get it, but too. I mean, I know, right? I, I feel like we should be doing that. Uh, Rockford Fozzie is six and a half for so Focal six and a half front door. Okay, first off. Um. They both make 27 different pairs of six and a half. So you gotta be a little bit more specific. Uh, 27, huh? It just feels that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I mean, wow, like, look at you. I mean, okay, so Focal, mm -hmm. you got Auditor, mm -hmm. you got Integration, yep. you got Access, mm -hmm. you got um, Polyglass, you got Flax, you got K2. K's, no, you got K's, K2, KRX2. Mm -hmm. And then you have Utopia, and then you have, there's another one above that. Ultima. Well, no, yeah, whatever. And then Rockford, you have Prime. Prime. Punch. Punch. There's three different punch versions of the yeah. speaker. You have Power. Uh, you have T1 Power. Uh, you have T2 yeah. Power. Um, and then they have the three, T3, three, T4. Have four. That's it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Got a, yeah, it's like 20 different pairs of speakers. Uh, do you have enough time for another podcast? No. I can't even get the stuff done that I have right now. Dude, let me tell you what. This Rockford thing, man, we're... I was... I'm desperately... I, my goal is to have it done tonight so that I can do a final view of it tomorrow night and then get it off to them for their approval in order to release it. So for those of you that are waiting, why didn't we have videos today and yesterday? It's because I probably won't have one tomorrow because um, I'm trying to get the Rockford video done and edited and ready to go. So uh, they can approve. Oh, it's yeah, right now I'm at an hour and 10 minutes. The videos, wow. but I still have, I, it's probably gonna be between an hour and 20 to an hour and a half long. It's a big monster video. And let me, oh my God, dude, you guys. The amount of information on that how they there. do their product. Honestly, I, I still feel we're gonna get done with it and they're gonna be like, you know what, we've changed our mind. You guys can't show this to anybody. Yeah. Because the amount of information that they're opening the door to show people how they do things is, is insane. It's ridiculous. Like I'm watching last night, I'm going, why are they telling it? Like. They've literally, they're literally giving any other manufacturer that is, I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of manufacturers are going to go like, we can't do that. We can't afford that. Yeah. But the amount of work that goes into every single product that leaves there, and don't get me wrong. A lot of manufacturers, like the big, the big guys, yeah. you know, like Kicker and JL, they and do it. They're, they're doing yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Um, Cause we saw the same thing when we went to Kicker. Uh, the difference is, and this is the difference, uh, when we went to Rockford, they had the luxury of seeing what we did for Kicker, and we were like, no, no, we're going to give you more information uh, because we saw what they did, and uh, we're, we're going to participate in this. So like when we did, it, yeah. yeah, when we did Kicker, it was just my idea of what I kind of want to do, not knowing all the secrets, and then they just, I didn't know what I didn't know, so they just kind of gave me what I asked for, and nothing else whereas these guys are like we're gonna give you everything like yeah. here's the kitchen sink you figure out how you want to portray it i yeah. mean and then this is what i don't see why now they they don't want it to you know oh they're gonna have any well, problem with the release but kicker kickers just didn't know what we were doing right they had no idea you know the the, the concept of Someone coming to your facility and doing a documentary to share it with other people. No, it's just, just not, doesn't, because it doesn't, doesn't make exist. any sense. Doesn't yeah, no it, one's it, ever wanted to do exist. that. It doesn't exist. Like if you type history of that, you're gonna find different things, but not a video of Fernanda is the next at the old fashioned podcast. <laughs> if you could get him to do it, man, I'd pay you. Old. How do you help customers to pick speaker brands besides oh now now we're going to brands 
I don't really care about the brand so much as the functionality of the brand, okay? Yeah. It's Everybody me. has a favorite brand. <clears throat> I have a favorite brand. God. <laughs> Are you okay? No, man, they keep hitting me because of the, the way I'm sitting. What's well, so stop eating? I'm going to. Oh my god. Beryllium, top of the line. Uh, yes, but they have they have <laughs> one above that one. Um. All right. So how do you? So like, I'm a big fan of Morel, as we all know. But that yeah. does that doesn't mean that there isn't another speaker out there mm -hmm. that I'm not going to enjoy. I mean, oh, the yeah. the to me the joy of this is being able to listen to everybody's what you know awesome speakers. I mean, I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think right now there's so much good stuff out there. It's 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 just so much good stuff out there, and obviously I want to own it all, but that's not possible. Um, but yeah, I just it's just there's so much good stuff out there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you think it makes sense for companies to make so many different options? It's confused. It's confused me when looking. I end up with Morel Hybrids Two Way Active. Hey, and you, yeah, that's so awesome speaker. I'm going to agree with you on this. I think manufacturers go way too far. Um, this is how I kind of look at it, though, and why it is the way it is. When I was younger, mm -hmm. back, back in the day, uh, many, many years ago, nothing was open on Sunday. Okay. okay. And then, one day, someone decided to open up for a couple hours on Sunday. Okay. All right. And then, well, they, they were the only ones making money. Well, we can't have that. So then, somebody else would open on Sunday. And there used to be nobody open on holidays. And now, everybody's open on holidays. Mm -hmm. So, the greed has, has kind of taken over the world. Now, if you're a manufacturer, <clears throat> most manufacturers, they don't really have a direction. They kind of have a direction, but they don't always have a direction. You know, they might say, we just make good stuff. Okay, well, if you're making good stuff, how are you, you, you know... When you say when, when they don't you, have a direction, in well, okay, follow me. On, let me let me get there. The direction is we make good stuff. Okay. All right. Or we make the best stuff for the ability. You know, it's like okay. Well, explain to me a fifty-nine dollar set of speakers. Well, we have the best fifty-nine dollar set of speakers. Um, okay. It's, what? Why is that even a thing? So, car manufacturers have been doing this for years. You know, you look at like the entry level car. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the, like, GM. GM is a great example of mm -hmm. this. Uh, they've taken it to a level that no one can pass. You know, you have Chevy, GMC, you had Buick and Oldsmobile, and then you had Saturn, and then you had, you know, it was like a car for every person. Mm -hmm. Slow it down. Yes, it gets confusing. And then you have the opposite side of that, like, um, like Audio Frog. Audio mm -hmm. Frog has two lines. Mm -hmm. They have the best, and they have this other brand. Mm -hmm. um, which is still awesome. But that's it. it it's like, narrow it down. Do you, do you want the best we have to make? Okay, no. All right, well, we have this other stuff that's not quite as good, but still better than 90% of the shit out there. Um, but, yeah, I, I... Everybody wants... Nobody wants to ever say no. Like, we carry so much... Like, Paul will carry every brand he could possibly do... Because he just wants people to walk in and say, hey, do you have this? Yes, here you go. And it's an easy sale. So, you know, how many, that's how many I, pairs of $69, six and a half do you need? And that's what I see that these I, manufacturers do. They they want all the customers. So yeah. I can offer you I mean, everybody a does line it. and you don't have to go and look for something else. Right. You know, everybody does it. But, like, for example, like most Japanese companies... Like Pioneer. Pioneer doesn't make a $2,000 set of speakers because they know they're never going to sell it here in the United States. Mm -hmm. They make them in Japan, they don't make them here. Uh, Kenwood's the same way. You know, they, they can make a speaker up to a certain price point and then they're just not going to bother with it because they know no one's going to buy it. Um, I, I feel knowing your role in your industry is something that manufacturers really need to pay a little bit more attention to. So, for example... Like a, a Focal Auditor. It's a great speaker. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to say... Uh, or even even an Uno. Like a, a Hertz Uno. DG, uh, yeah, okay, okay, Hertz. Yeah, yeah Hertz Uno. Okay, 
So they're gonna sell them, mm -hmm. but like your story is Millie. You know, your story is K2, your story is Flax. Yeah, well, ain't not everybody but, gonna afford me. No, no, I, I, I there, but there again, I understand that, and your that statement is the problem with all of it. Mm -hmm. Not, you, not everybody deserves your brand, okay? And, but manufacturers never want to say no to anybody. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is not everybody deserves your brand because Correct. you just, like, like I would love a Lamborghini, but they don't make. A fifty thousand dollar Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. They don't. Okay, you you can't even get parts for the car. Like I can't even buy a wheel and a tire. You know, because that's like ten grand just to hang on the wall. Yeah. Um. So, not everybody deserves your brand. Yeah. Okay. That's it. But no one will do that because no manufacturer wants to leave money on the table. So they'll do whatever they have to do. Mm -hmm. They'll get it made. You know, oh, we designed it. We just had it. It's just a major, All right. So you know. if you, you, you are my competitor, right? And you come out with a $50, $50, $40, $40 speakers. And then I see how, my, how many people buy those speakers from you. Yes. I want the same people. And, and so and, I'm going to make the same speakers. Yes. So I can get at least half of that. Well, you'll never or, get half of it. Oh, yes. Or get into the market. So. Ah, <laughs> uh, there you go. Oscar. I have a Ferrari wheel from a Ferrari race car. That's cool. See, nice. that's neat. All right, what well, company? Would, money. <laughs> what company would you choose to cover everything? Amp, sub, mids, tweets, etc. I don't think there's any one company that excels that way. Um, you know, JL wants to be that guy. You know, you have all the C series speakers. You have the VXI amplifiers. You have the JL subs, which are great. Um, you know, when you look at Kicker, they try to do the same thing. Rockford tries to do the same thing. Um, you know, Focal has all those things, plus DSP. Uh, they make great amplifiers. So, I mean, there's a lot of companies out there that, that excel in, or they make everything. They just don't excel at all things. Mm -hmm. And we're in enough of a, we, we, there's enough product out there that I don't feel like I should have to lock myself into one brand. Like when you look at the Japanese companies, uh, the Japanese companies are like, we make radios, we make amps, we make subs, we make speakers like Alpine, um, Alpine Kicker, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Alpine Kenwood and um, Pioneer. They make the whole thing soup to nuts, some better than others. Like Alpine makes a much yeah. better product than a Pioneer is going to make um, as far as higher end products because, you know, Alpine makes the X series mm -hmm. and Pioneer makes the Z series, but nowhere near in the level of that. But... <laughs> Uh, and yes, Audison makes everything soup to nuts as well. Forza System is a great example of, of yeah. that. Yeah. But I listen. It, it, like Focal makes great speakers. Morel makes great speakers. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want their amplifiers, even though they make great amplifiers. I don't necessarily want their amplifiers. You know. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to kick out of bed that new Morel 45th anniversary amplifier. It's a right. badass amplifier. Mm -hmm. um, and there again, I also like the Focal. Was it the 690, the, the six channel that can be a five channel? These are awesome, awesome products. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to pick the best of everything and put it on my plate. I don't want to have to settle at any point. Okay, mm -hmm. I guess this is the yeah. easiest way to say yeah. that, you know? So, I don't know. Um, Q, uh, kicker Q class. Yeah. There again, yeah. you know, it's it's was uh, more audio fraud and Helix or no goes. Oh, uh, there again, yeah. Helix makes speakers. Helix makes a ton of awesome speakers, but Helix isn't known for their speakers. They're known for their amps and DSPs. So a lot of people will buy their amps and DSPs and never even dream of going into their speakers. Mm -hmm. And it's like the Brax line of Helix is some next level stuff like dude if you want to if, if you want to look at price points that are so far out of your reach check out brax um they have like a five thousand dollar dsp <laughs> that you custom make beautiful you just buy it a la carte mm -hmm. ah yeah mm, you'll see that soon enough we actually got to look at that piece when we were at msc um, but I can't release that video because it's not made yet, but after Rockford's. Uh, how about the Kenwood XR? Isn't that high res? Totally high res. And there again, K2 
Kenwood is is will give you a soup to nuts uh, from, high res system from the radio all the way out to the final product. Mm -hmm. Alpine will give you a high res system. Pioneer will give you a high res system. Um, Audison is high res certified, or it just says high res on the box. I don't know which one that is. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Um, but they don't make a receiver, so you're going to have to provide your source of high res music. Um, but keep in mind, like, what makes the high res speaker a high res speaker is that it, it plays music up to 40,000 hertz. A lot of speakers have done that for a very long time. It's just, they, they don't go past 20 in their ratings because it's like, why? Hello from Miami. Hey. <clears throat> Oscar knows about the 45th anniversary. Yeah, he yeah. just posted like all these pictures of them. Very nice. <clears throat> See, I'm not even eating them now and it's still like regurgitating up into my throat. Johnny's in the house. What's that? <laughs> 2008 Honda Pilot, radio swap. Retaining Retain factory DVD. Ugh. Is the one that you have to retain the screen in the top? I don't know if that's... On a 2008, I don't think it matters. I think it just works. You're going to have to use headphones, though. I don't think there's anything to it. Screw the new Alpine F1. I'll take the Brax all day. There again. Yeah. Totally understand. Yeah. It makes sense. Um, nothing wrong with the new F1. Actually, we got to see our first... Did you go look at the pictures? No, of, I was uh, trying to look, and I can't find it. Um, hold on. So somebody did a, uh, over in Indonesia, did, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the place out in Indonesia did a, um, a full F1 status and it looks gorgeous. Like they did, they did an amazing job and the speakers, and it was funny too, cause they did it for, I don't know what they're called. I, I don't know. That's what those problems I'm just trying to find it and I can't find it. Yeah. I'll have to find it. Maybe I'll find it and show it on the news tomorrow. Yeah. So what is it? Let me see. What um, do they have? The whole thing? Oh, you might be able to just uh, search F1 status. Search Alpine F1. Hmm. Well, you got to search a topic, a hashtag. Hang See it, you're just searching for a person. You gotta, no, you gotta, on. You I'm gotta gonna go tags. tags. There you go. All by F1. And we have Pioneer. Oh no, we have Sony. Maybe type in Indonesia. <laughs> Alpine Indonesia. Either way. Yeah. Um. I'll just have to live at the shop, listen to all the speakers to pick what I like. <laughs> yep, we're buying more cars. I like the Kenwood products. Like, I like the Kenwood products a lot too. Um, when we did that, dude, that Miazda, that Miazda, the Miata that we did, um, that you guys just saw. Nope. No, it, it's 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 a van. That's not it. That's not even close. Um, hey, it looks like the uh, Selenium tweeter. That's them. No, that's not them. I thought that was them. Yeah. A Honda? I don't know. It was a van. They did it in the Maybe rear. Maybe sounds drooping. No. No, that ain't it. I thought that was... Okay, so if you find it, just like... Yeah. Yeah, because they have brats. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, we're getting sidetracked here. Mm. Um. Anyways, I was saying, hi, Rez. Can we? We can't even hear it. Um. You're wrong there. You can totally hear it. Yeah. Uh, you can totally, you, you can hear, totally it. hear hi, Rez music. Um. In it, it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just gonna make this easy for you when it comes to the hi, Rez music thing. And the, regardless of what you think or feel or or what age you are or anything like that. What it really comes down to is how your ear is designed. Um, you hear higher frequencies out here and you hear lower frequencies deeper in your ear. And when you're, you have to remember that sound rolls off. Okay. And when it rolls off, the, the energy decreases. When you move the roll off point further down. Okay. So another octave down. All right. That means the intensity and the information at the audible range 
is greater. That is what you're hearing in high res. And that is the very basic thought process there because, and you can. Um, I've sat there with a pair of headphones on and AB between a high res song and a non high res song and could totally hear the difference. Could totally hear the difference. Okay. So it's just more information that is there and it just sounds better. Uh, it's not night and day though. It's not drastic. It's not you sitting there going, holy crap. You probably could sit in a car that is playing high res and not even realize you were listening to it. Um, it would just be one of those things where you're like, oh, this sounds, this sounds pretty good. Or you might not even care, but yes, there is a difference and you can hear it, but it's not something that you're just going to walk in and go, holy crap, this sounds great. This must be high res. This has to be high res, right? <laughs> did you take that picture with your iPhone or did you use a DSLR? Cause I mean, that's like a gorgeous picture. You had to use a DSLR. There's no way you captured that with a phone, bro. Yeah, what kind of camera did you use? Tell me, man. What kind of, how'd you record that music? Yeah, yeah, okay, so boom, there we go. Uh, anyways, I was saying that Mazda sounded phenomenal. When we got done with that, those eight inch or seven inch Kenwoods in the door, those XRs were just like, holy crap. I think Audio Patrol was smart. They made their amp tech install friendly, a lot of applications, and that has helped you guys and them for, and customers. Um, you, you're right, you're 100%. When you know they started designing their software, um, they wanted to go after the larger share of the market. They wanted to make it simple, easy. Uh, they were worried that DSP was too esoteric and that it was too small and that people would be afraid of it. So they wanted to make simpler to use DSP. And that is kind of where we're at now when we talk to them about, you know, DSP Pro, as it were. Um, it evolving into a, a bigger DSP, it, there's a fine line. How much more do we need? Because it still needs to be user-friendly. It still needs to be fun. It still needs to be uh, sellable. High res equals Dolby B and C. Oh, dang, Jeff. Dang, says the guy that gave us most What's of that? our- High res. <laughs> equals Dolby B and C. Um, so, okay, so. Alpine make F1 status generation one, generation two, and now this is generation three. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Focal PS165 V1s? P what? PS165 V1s. I'm guessing that's Focal Flax before they were, they weren't bad. I, I, dude, I mean, listen. <laughs> It takes a lot to make a bad Focal Flax speaker, all right? The Focal makes great speakers. That's their thing, you know? And remember, when it comes to like a V1 versus a V2, today is Thursday, which is cool because tonight is Hi-Fi Vega night. Uh, we get to do side jag, we get to do reverse polarity. But my point is, is that today, this product is the cool, this is the best screwdriver with a whirly jig on it that you've ever seen. This thing is phenomenal. This thing is great. I was like, really? Yep. Wow, now you own it. Tomorrow, Ooh. V2 comes out. That doesn't mean that this thing sucks. They suck. That just means they came out with a different version of it and it's gonna have newer things. Is it gonna be better? Yeah, that's the whole reason why you come out with something. But if this was the flagship badass speaker today and the new one comes out tomorrow, it's not like this thing just became obsolete and is gonna suck forever. It's not, it's not how it works. Um, what's up guys? What's up? All right, let me zoom down here. Uh, thank you for taking time to share and answer questions. Hey, I'm glad, you know. Hi, Mark. Oh, is Mark from Car Audio here? Car Audio Fabrication. Uh, in other words, what makes a high res high res? The combination of all the high res head unit and speakers only? Yeah, so what, by definition, what makes them, <coughs> Again, He's oh just, my By God. definition, what makes something high res has to do with a certification package. Um, years ago, some of you guys might remember a thing called THX. THX was uh, something that George Lucas created to make 
theater experience is more uniform so that when you went into one theater, it was THX certified, it would sound like every other theater that was THX certified. It eventually worked its way into home because there's more money there. And then you had products that were THX certified, which basically means there was a bunch of criteria, which is the same for high res. And if you can hit that criteria and pay an entrance fee, then you got to say your product is THX certified, now high res audio. To reproduce sound through high res stereo correctly, you would have to have a radio that is capable of playing high res music some way, an amplifier that is capable of reproducing said music, and speakers that could, there again, reproduce what the amplifier is feeding them. Close enough. Subwoofers aren't high res, so it really doesn't matter. It what? has to do with the high frequency response. So that's what makes something high res certified, okay? When we built the Mazda system, the gentleman that came in wanted a high res certified system, meaning he wanted those logos, those high res logos on all the boxes that we were putting in because that's what he wanted. So we gave him that. Um, there was no point talking him out of it because it, it's, it's not what he wanted. He wanted something very specific. Um, now, as far as the music you play back, whether it's a DSD, whether it's a FLAC, uh, whether it's whatever recording version number you have is entirely up to you and what you're willing to pay for. Um, but there again, it's kind of like having a 100 watt 6x9 with a 35 watt amplifier on it. Guess what? how big those 6x9s are, Fernando? Six by nine. So if I have a hundred watt six by nines and I six by nines, and I put thirty five watts on them. How how much uh, how much power are those six by nines? Uh, thirty five watts. Thirty five watts. I know this blows people's minds. I still don't understand how that was ever not a thing. Um, so you could build a full high res system in your car and never play any high res music in it, and you will never notice a difference because you're not feeding it what it needs in order to shine. Um, is it still going to sound great? Yes. Is it going to sound any different? No. It just it can if you buy the right stuff. So, yeah, those guys are nuts. Um, moving on. Not a stock Toyota head unit. I hate those. Ooh, like Dolby Atomos. Now, wow, you learn stuff every day. Ooh, I know. You know what's funny? I still have never. I, I got to turn that on. I got to set up the Atomos on. Yeah, on my receiver. I I haven't turned it on yet. It's, yeah, but I have it, but I don't use it. Yeah, kind of dumb. Uh, my point is December 10th. Wait. Wait for me. Wait for me there. I already want to have my team assemble. Okay. Uh, are aluminum pods any good for three-way setups on the pillars? Ooh, yeah. Ooh, actually, I actually did think a I set find of those. It. Those were nice. Oh, you found it. I find it. I think so. Yeah, that's it. Well, yep, that's it. I'll find USA. Page. Well, they, they just took it from... From whoever they yeah, did it? Yeah. yeah. So, yep. So just go to the uh, Instagram, I'll, Alpine USA. Wait a minute, they don't even know what we're talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, there's an F1 status system, and it was made in Indonesia, but mm -hmm. if you go to, on Instagram, Alpine USA, mm -hmm. they have pictures of it. It's in the yeah. back of a van. Mm -hmm. Um and it's totally worth checking out. Hold on, let me, let me show you what I mean and why. So, <clears throat> there it is. Alpine USA, F1 status system. But what's, okay, what you're gonna wanna do is, the show, look at, okay, look at these speakers. Mm -hmm. Okay, because this is the closest we've gotten to See. these speakers. Look at that surround, guys. Yeah. That is some next level crazy stuff that we're looking at right there. Um, there's, and the, the yeah, mid there's the, the mid same. bass. Look, uh, um, yeah, so that ain't your average speaker. The subwoofer has the same sound. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what immediately what caught me. Back to the aluminum things. Yes, the aluminum things sound great. We've done a couple for some people in the past. Uh, it sounded wonderful. Uh, it's a nice solid baffle. Uh, okay, Instagram, Alpine USA, very cool. Yeah, but they're they're really oh. neat. So I don't I don't you know it's.
definitely new technology. So I'm pretty excited. I hope some of that technology will trickle down into other products that they're making. Hopefully Alpine is uh, watching this and is gonna send us the F1 status. So I don't want that. I don't want that. I want, I want other things that we can't talk about. Yeah. Just to show them. You know, I didn't, I didn't look close enough at those pictures. No? Well, no, because I should have. I really should have. Damn it. But I didn't... Yeah. yeah, we know what's coming. It's going to be cool. Um, what would happen if I used the kicker component 6x9s with a 1-inch tweeter and the kicker 2 and 3 quarter mid-range running passive? Would they be all right? Would they be too bright? Well, funny you should ask. Um... So the truck that just left that we showed yesterday had a set of KS tweeters in the dash mm -hmm. with the KS two and a half. So they were on channel one and two, meaning tweeter mid on one channel, tweeter mid on the second mm. channel. Um, I don't know where he got the, the KS tweeters from, but they didn't have any crossovers, so we just used capacitors. The KS two and a half or two inch just comes with a capacitor. So they were being powered off the KS five channel. Um, which we crossed them over at 500. Mm -hmm. Crossed them over 500 because that was as high as we could go without getting like ridiculous. I didn't want to cross them over any higher than. I mean, with the capacitor on there, I'm thinking they were fine. And then in the door, we had a set of Q class coaxial six by nines that we put a band pass on. So we band passed those out. Uh, so the. Even though it was a biampable speaker, we could have just disconnected the tweeter. We didn't want to because we still wanted to make sure that they blended with the mids and the dash. There again, it was a full passive system. The only active part was, you know, the crossover and well, yeah, anyways. The point is, is it sounded fabulous. It, it really did. Um, no DSP bummer but no dsp it sounded fabulous the customer loved it uh it was powered off at alpine radio so we got to use their nine band parametric eq uh their time alignment in alpine is sucks but we were still able to get a great image up on the dash being able to control the levels between the six by nines and, and the fact is, is that you got to remember that two and a half and tweeter were really close together so they coupled together really nice it just had a it just had a really good sound for a really basic stereo and it was like damn okay uh would you be able to tell me what dsp i can use for 12 speaker six sub setup uh you're gonna want a 12 channel dsp the most reasonably priced 12 channel dsp is going to be the alpine it's going to be the PXE 850X, I think, is your most reasonably priced 8-channel, 12-channel DSP. It's a fabulous DSP. Used it for years. I used the previous version of it. New version is basically the same, just different software, a little bit easier to use. Um, all right, guys, listen. This has been 5 Minutes with 5 Star. Oh, I thought it was an hour. Could have been. Either way, we're going to get out of here. It's time to go. It's getting dark. Yeah, it is. So, dark, to go so dark and spooky. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your night. Make sure you head over to the Hi-Fi Vegas Network at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time to check out Reverse Polarity, where we do nothing but talk about very serious car audio stuff. I have no idea what the topic is tonight. And then after that, if you want to, you can head over to SideJag, where we talk about movies. And this week's movie is The Harder They Fall from Netflix. So check it out. You guys have a great rest of your night. We will see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Correct. On Dean and Fernando's Car Stereo Clips, the YouTube channel, we were talking to you about the news and all the news that is happening in the 12 volt industry. You guys have a great rest of your night. Bye. Bye. Good every. Good evening. Yeah, good everybody. I don't know. How's everybody doing today? Just chilling outside. Getting ready to start the live show and. 20 minutes. Arturo's in the house. What's happening? You guys often ask about sound treatment and stuff like that. And this, this is our sound treatment test area. We've had, you got what, Ro Dynamat, Hushmat, and Stinger stuck to the wall. This is also this other Butyl stuff we got that's like quarter inch. We did it, I don't know, like two, three years ago. They gave us a piece, piece of it. We ended up, I think we shipped it off to somebody. But 
these have been stuck to the wall for years. You can see I'm trying to peel some of them off every now and then just to see. They both stick. And like the paint on this door is that crappy, like yucky stuff. So we just stuck them right on and they've held. Uh, Rockford Prime amps, are they good? The R2s are wonderful. They have distortion detection built into it. So like a DD1 style thing is built into it. Uh, makes setting them up really nice. Haha, <laughs> nice testing, right? I've, I mean, if they could stick to this and they've been up here for years and, and the sun just, just piles on these. So like this is terrible out back here during the summer and they've been up there for years. So good, good for them. <laughs> uh, but no, the, the Rockford R2 stuff is, is pretty nice stuff. You know, if you're looking for a budget, budget style amplifier with a lot of features, great protection built into it, that kind of stuff for sure. What's up from San Diego? Hello, question. I have a 2021 Durango, but volume is limited with installing an amp help with making it louder. Wife doesn't want to change head unit. Did you get, okay. First question I'd have on the Durango, does it have premium audio like Alpine, Infinity, or anything like that? If it does, you should be using an, an, a sub pro, a pack sub pro uh, to do that. Secondly, if you didn't use that because let's say it's a base model system, make sure you use the front speaker. If you use any other speaker other than let's say the front drivers or passengers, then you're not gonna get bass out of them because anything other than those two speakers are limited on their bass response. Even the sub, I wouldn't use the sub. I would go to the front door speakers. Uh, what do you think about Hertz CPK Pro 6.5 versus Focal Access? I don't, I don't know what the CPK Pro is. Uh, if it's one of their like pro speakers, like their loudspeakers, they're different animals, so totally different animals altogether. Um, Focal Access is their entry-level sound quality speaker. Um, if we're talking about Cento Pros, then that's that's like a level playing field, and they're both going to be... One is going to have the Focal tweeter. The other one is going to have the Milli, I'm sorry, the Hertz tweeter, which is, you know, going to be a little bit more tame. Uh, so, uh, which is the one you and Fernando prefer to use? Which one are we talking about? Sound treatment? Doesn't matter. Uh, Three-way in a 2017 Silverado, would you put the mid in the dash or the tweet? Believe it or not, we just, that red truck we did this week on Monday and Tuesday, which we showed here on Instagram, we put the mid and the tweet up in the dash. He had already cut holes and put the tweeter up there and it sounded great, like fabulous. Um, I, I haven't heard that truck with the tweeter mounted someplace else. Even like when Nick did it with the Illusion uh, three and a halfs up there, it was the tweeter in the mid up in the top of the dash like that. That sounded wonderful. When Alpine did their kit, they put the tweeter in the mid up in the dash as well, and that sounded wonderful. So I'm almost thinking you want to try to get the tweeter and the mid up in the dash. Hi from South Africa. Is the Rockford Fosgate DS1 still wrong? Worth getting as a starter? It's worth getting as a finisher. You know, the problem with the DSR-1 right now is just supply, trying to get them. They're like almost none to be had. As far as whether it's a solid DSP, it's a fabulous DSP that does a ton of stuff. Sounds sounds great. Um, it's it's still a wonderful DSP. It's just, they're so hard to find right now. How many hours of playing, uh, playing time does it take to break in a Focal Flax? I don't think there's any like, hey, you have to play it for this long to get it to break in. Um, I'm not, I've never really asked. I would think a good eight to 10 hours would probably be enough. But then again, it just depends on how abusive you're playing it. Um, but it's a, it's a heat up, cool down, heat up, cool down kind of thing. I, I don't think like you can just, we well, probably could just play it until it gets really hot for an extended period of time. I mean, we've done that. I've had guys that have driven, you know, four or five hours 
back home and like yeah it sounds totally like wow when they're done so hey man i have a pack harness in my dodge charger i set my gains in my speakers but they that when i meter my subwoofer it instantly sends a distorted signal When you talk about a pack harness, I mean, are you talking about an amp pro that you have? Um, if you are talking about the amp pro, the front rear and sub outputs are exactly the same. They create, they basically inside of there is a, a matrix that move that that just splits them up and gives you the illusion of front rear sub, uh, so that when you're using the fader. It goes front, it goes rear, but it's actually the same signal. It's just digitally controlled, and then the subwoofer isn't affected by the fader. So all six outputs play exactly the same thing. So if you're getting some form of a distorted signal, it's not coming from the pack because it would be on all channels. The way the Dodge system works is there's actually only two channels of audio coming from the factory radio, and the interface creates more channels for you to have simply by putting it through a splitter and moving them out and then digitally controlling the gains for the rear channel for the front channel the sub channel is actually the cleanest channel out of the bunch because there's no front rear capability on it it's just literally main volume control so i i don't i don't know that's kind of weird and there again i might not understand the question also it's a beautiful night out here, by the way. It's it's actually this is cool. Uh, is the Alpine ILX F four eleven still being manufactured? When it comes to Alpine, if it's on their website, they still have it. Whether it's being manufactured or not, don't know. Um, as far as like right now, nothing is really being manufactured in great great quantities because of all the part shortages we're having. So there's a possibility it's still a current product, but they're not currently making it because they can't get parts to manufacture it. But if it shows it on the website, then yes, it's still a current model that's available. However, it might not actually be available to own at the moment. Good day from Australia. 2012 Mazda 3 wants to retain the factory unit, but add amps, etc. LC6i, good option. How do I know if the factory unit stuff it stuffs up EQ curve? Thanks. Um, that does have bass roll off. The LC6i is the minimum you'd want. LC7i has AccuBase and we'll fix it. Personally, I would go with the LCQ1 instead of either one of those. The LCQ1 is going to give you six bands of equalization for front, six bands for rear, and five bands for sub. So it does have a factory EQ curve built into it. All radios do, whether it's that old or not. But that will at least give you the ability to go in and color it the way you want it, fixing their EQ curve. It's the same exact footprint as an LC6i. It just gives you an analog EQ on top of it. It's one of my personal favorites. I'd also recommend getting the ARC3 volume knob for it. That way you can turn it on and off and AB between the two. It's a pretty nice piece. What's up? Mama always said. Dean, what's going on? Amp Pro, okay. Uh, have you guys worked on a 2018 Kia Forte? I'm gonna say yes. Not sure if this is the right time, but I saw you guys have a Wayne Dust Collector. Do you guys like it? I think you're talking about that thing hanging from the ceiling that we bought a while back. Um, yeah, that's it. Yep, this thing here. Um, it doesn't get used all that often. We bought it uh, right before we decided that we were never going to cut uh, sawdust anymore um, from wood uh, on the panel saw so it just kind of hangs there uh, when we do do stinky things we turn it on and it cycles the air pretty quick so from that regards it is pretty nice piece I personally would want it lower like I feel it's up too high 
and it's like there's too much room between this to do a really adequate job and this size area like it, it, it it's just it's not big enough to cycle through personally a uh, bigger shop or a cyclone, a bigger shop, you know, the vacuum system with maybe a cyclone would have been a better idea. But, you know, we just didn't know when we bought it. It does really great when Fernando farts, though. It cleans up the air, like, really fast. How you doing, man? Awesome. Yeah? Yeah. What you doing? Nothing. Just getting ready? Getting prepped? Nice. Uh, have you guys installed any ES or German Maestro yet? No. No, we're, we're not an ES dealer, so we can't just pick this stuff up. Um, so it kind of sucks. Uh, plus, they're not putting on a lot of dealers right now just because they can't get the product anyways. So um, it's something we're hoping to rectify next year when products become more available. Oh, you're welcome. Fernando's right here. I was just sitting outside because, man, it's a beautiful night out there right now. I mean, we actually had to work outside all day today, mm -hmm. which was kind of a bummer at first, but then the sun never really came out, and it, it just stayed nice and cool, and we didn't break like you. I mean, you broke a sweat, but I think that was just from eating your fire chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he had fire Cheetos for lunch, as uh, typical fashion, and then covered them in the fresh bottle of Valentina sauce. Hey, Dean and Fernando. Hey. Uh, have you guys played with the new J JL Audio Tuning Max box? No, we have not. We do have one on order uh, from a friend of mine is hopefully going to get us, get us one because uh, we're not a JL dealer. So I can't just call him up and be like, hey, guys, could, you know, I'll gladly pay you for one of these if you can. They, they don't do that, which is kind of a bummer. So I'm having to buy it from another JL Audio dealer. Hopefully we'll get that sometime sometime before next year, but I'm not holding my breath, are you? No. Yeah, I don't see it coming anytime in the near future. I, I really would like to get it though, because I, I, I want to kind of dig into it and play with it. Um, for those of you who don't know, that's the new JL Max. It's a... A lot of DS. It's a lot. It's it's a lot of RTA. I should say. It's, there's a lot of things it can do. A little bit more advanced than let's say just a regular DM RTA. Uh, DM RTA is great. This is gonna kind of do a lot of other things that you may or may not need, but it's there, so it's awfully tempting. You know? Yeah. I feel like you gotta have it. It's front door lock. Uh, the front door is locked. Perfect. Nice. Are the R six and a half good speakers? Ooh, yes. I like the R's. Don't like the S's. Like the R's. Like the X too. X is nice. Um, hmm. What if they're gonna? Wonder how those are doing, like quantity wise. X's. You know. I wonder if they're gonna blow those out. Hmm. No, the R's are nice. I like the new R tweeter. Uh, in the past. Alpine with the R speaker always kept it kind of mild and like vanilla, like you kind of had to EQ it to kind of bring it alive and make it like peppy sounding. Um, honestly, I think their engineers just stole some Focal stuff and were like, hey, we should make our stuff sound like this. Uh, the new R type tweeter is the weirdest looking tweeter they've ever built, but it definitely will get up and dance. There's no question about it. It's a nice sounding speaker. And they're easy to install, which I totally dig. Fernando looks tired. Yes, I'm tired. Why are you tired? I don't know. You know, just tired. Tired, tired, tired? That's it. <laughs> I think we're both tired. I think we're always tired. Um, he got some work done on his tattoo yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I started watching the uh, Rockford video. But then I realized that um, I was really, really sleepy. <laughs> so I, I didn't get to finish watching it. Um, but I, I got about a third of the way through. Okay. Just checking everything. 
making sure there's no like giant mistakes mm-hmm. um i'm really excited i want to get this thing off my laptop and into everyone's uh possession for sure so everybody can see it definitely yeah i think that's the thing there's like no clock on this for some reason like i don't know why there's no, no, clock. no clock so there's no there's no clock anywhere on we were talking about like we need a clock somewhere that we can actually see because when we uh put the screens up we can't see the clock that big obnoxious clock we have behind it what's up johnny um because we have to make sure we hit specific times yeah but hey listen guys it is saturday night and we're about seven minutes away from starting the live show over on youtube on five star car stereo if you haven't logged in yet or gotten ready, I would, I'm going to let you guys go so you can go get your drink, go get your comfy spot, grab your phone, your laptop, TV, whatever it is you guys use, and we'll see you guys over there taking more questions, having good fun. You ready, Fernando? I'm ready, man. Let's Where's go. your Coke? I thought you wouldn't bought a Coke. Where yeah, the is it? Yeah, it's in the freezer. You going to start drinking it? Uh, not yet. You need to, man. You need to wake up, bro. All right, guys, we'll see you in a few minutes. If not, this has been 5 Minutes of 5 Star. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye.